Well, hello, hello to all of you out there in Algebra 2 Trigonometry world. This is a huge day for us. This is the first day we are going to talk about the trigonometry portion of the course. So, you obviously know that our course is titled Algebra 2 Trigonometry, and up until today we have only focused on the Algebra 2 part, which is kind of amazing because hopefully you'd agree you've learned quite a bit this year, and uh, believe it or not, it's only half of the course. So, like I said, today we're starting trigonometry, and you can use the word trig for short, that's perfectly okay. Now, <clears throat> you'll notice that our topic is right triangle trigonometry, and that's a huge deal. We are only focusing on right triangles. So go ahead and copy that sketch down on the paper here, on your paper that I have on the screen. And I think you would agree from geometry, a right triangle means you have a right angle. And you can see in my corner here, I have a right angle. And to represent that, we're just going to draw a box in that corner. And again, right angle means 90 degrees. So hopefully that's a little review for you. Now. The three sides of your triangle are very important. There are three names we want to get used to using. And those three words, you can jot them off to the side here, are hypotenuse, adjacent, and opposite. Now again, hopefully they sound familiar to you, and if they don't, that's okay too. Let's start with the word hypotenuse. Okay, This is your longest side. And another way we like to say it is that it's a cross from the right angle. Cross from the right angle. And that's usually the easiest one to identify in your picture. The longest side across from the right angle is a hypotenuse. So if we go to our picture right now, um, here's my right angle, and if I go across from it, you should see the hypotenuse. That's this large side here. So let's go ahead and label that on our picture as hypotenuse. All right, our second word is the word adjacent. Um, and if you're familiar with that, that's great. If not, you can think of it as the word next to. Um, all of you sit adjacent to somebody in class. You sit next to somebody in class. And it's going to be important that we understand that adjacent means next to. And I'll label that side in a moment. And opposite in this course is going to mean across from. All right, so I've got one more word for you before we, we label the rest in our picture here. And that is the term theta. Okay, so theta is a Greek letter, and the symbol for the Greek letter is a nice O with like a line through the middle, and that theta symbol is what we use in trig to represent any angle. Okay, so again, just get used to these new terms. It's like learning a new language. And I'm going to label my theta in this bottom angle of my triangle. And you can either put theta in the top or the bottom, but it definitely has to be in one of the angles. Okay. Now, based off my picture, I need to label the adjacent and the opposite side. And I think it's very simple. I always start with the hypotenuse. That's the obvious one. And from there, I'll say, this angle theta is adjacent to two sides. It's next to this side, the hypotenuse, and it's next to this side. Well, if you've already labeled the hypotenuse, that's leaving you the other side to be the adjacent side. And then the one across from theta is your opposite side. All right, so hopefully that was a nice review, and we're going to move on to learn some more trig words. All right, there are three trig ratios um, that you perhaps have heard of already from Algebra 1, and they are sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, we're going to abbreviate each of those with three letters, but they're still pronounced sine, cosine, and tangent. So, when I say sine, you always want to take the sine of an angle. So we're always going to say sine of theta. And sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, And even though I'm writing S-I-N, it looks like the word sin. Please don't say that. It's sine theta. The second one, cosine theta, we're going to abbreviate with COS. Okay, it's not cos or cos. It's still cosine theta equals, this one is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the last one, tangent theta, we're going to abbreviate with TAN theta. And this one is equal to opposite over adjacent. Now, 
again, maybe you remember these from algebra, maybe you don't. Um, we definitely like to use a little saying to memorize them, and that's the word Sokotoa. So go ahead and jot this down and get used to saying it and learning how to spell it. Sokotoa. And this will help you remember the trig ratios. Um, so I think Toa is the easiest one to say and spell. Toa, T-O-A. And that stands for tangent for T, O for opposite over adjacent. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. Ka, C-A-H, the C stands for cosine, A for adjacent, H for hypotenuse. And sine obviously has the S, so S-O-H, O for opposite, H for hypotenuse. So Soka Toa. We need to memorize this hopefully by tomorrow. Now, with that in mind, we can easily answer any trig question. Let's move on to our first example. In right triangle ABC, angle C is a right angle. C equals 15 and angle A equals 35 degrees. Find side A to the nearest tenth. All right, so one last little quick review from geometry here. Um, capital letters, A, B, C. When you see a capital letter, they are referring to an angle. Okay, so let's go ahead and jot that in our notebook. Lowercase letters, A, B, and C, or whatever letters they choose, those refer to sides. Okay, so uppercase are angles, lowercase are sides. Um, and lastly, we always want to be sure that we slow down, read the question, and label our picture carefully. So in right triangle ABC, so go ahead and draw yourself a right triangle, and before you label the angles, they'll probably tell you, you know, which one the right angle is. Angle C is a right angle, so I have to put C in the right angle spot. And A and B can go anywhere now, so I'm going to put my A up here and my B here. Notice I'm using capital letters to represent angles. Now again, that tells me that the lowercase letters are my sides. Now the sides are always opposite the letter they follow. So if this is angle A and I go across the picture, I'm going to get side A. So I'm going to put a little A there. If this is angle B and I go across the picture, put a lowercase b, that's side B. And again, angle C, if I go across the picture, that's going to be side C. And again, use lowercase letters for sides. All right, side C is 15, so I can put a 15 here. Angle A is 35, so we'll put our 35 degrees in there. And the question is, find side A. So I'm going to put an X on side A to the nearest tenth. All right, so it's just a little bit of self-talk now. Here's what we want you to do. We want you to put a mark on the angle that's given. So we're going to mark angle A there and just put an arc there. And what I do next is I just kind of circle the two things I know. I know side C is 15, and I know I'm looking for this side. So I'm just going to circle those two for myself. And lastly, I just need to label my signs hypotenuse, adjacent, and opposite. Now remember, hypotenuse is always the easiest one to start with. Hypotenuse is across from the right angle. So find your right angle, go across from it, and let's put a big H there for hypotenuse. I think adjacent's probably the next easiest. Adjacent means next to. And look at the angle you marked. That's angle A here, Okay, where our 35 degrees is. I would definitely say there are two adjacent sides. There's this one and this one. Well, one of them you just call the hypotenuse, therefore the other side must be the adjacent. And that leaves the one across to be the opposite. All right, so now you say, look at the two I've circled. This side, which is hypotenuse, and this side, which is opposite. And now you just go back to your good old friend, Soka Toa. And this is why you need to know how to spell it. So try writing it out without looking at your notes. So, ka, toa. Okay, and you look and you see which one deals with opposite and hypotenuse. And if I take a look, I'm looking for an O and an H, and that's going to get me sine. So now we'll set up our problem. Sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. 
So I'm going to say sine of my angle, and if I looked at my picture, my angle here was 35 degrees. So sine of 35 equals, I need the opposite, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 15. So x over 15. All right, at this point, it's a lot easier to deal with fractions, believe it or not, and I'm just going to put this over 1, and I'm going to cross multiply. Now, the one thing you want to make sure you always do is put this single number always in front of the trig function. So it's going to say 15 sine of 35 equals 1 times x is just x. And ask yourself, is x by itself? Well, clearly it is. So all I need to do is type this side in the calculator. So... Grab your calculator. I want to make one note here. We want to make sure our calculator mode is in, whoops, degree mode. So quickly check on your calculator. Um, you'll see the mode button is really next to the second button here. And if you just hit mode, you should see the screen that I have on my, uh, my picture here. And you just want to go over to degree and hit enter to make sure it's on degree mode. And if you do that, you're in great shape. And then just type in your 15, sign, a parenthesis should open, you're going to say of 35, and close it. And I get 8.6036, and I believe it said to the nearest tenth, so 8.6. And we have solved our first trig problem. All right, an example two, I'm going to try to move a little quicker for you. In right triangle ABC, so again, make sure you draw your right triangle, C is a right angle. So let's go ahead and label C our right angle, put a nice right angle in the corner, and then A and B can go wherever. The measure of angle B is read 42 degrees in 30 minutes. So let me write that out for you. 42 degrees and 30 minutes. Kind of like your latitude longitude is what it's saying. It's just another way to measure things a little more precise like inches, centimeters, millimeters, 42 degrees in 30 minutes. And let's go ahead and label that an angle B. And A, notice lowercase a, so that represents side A, which is across from angle A, is 25. Find C, so across from angle C, we'll put our x to the nearest tenth. So. Once you've identified what you're looking for, we just need to label our opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse, and we're in great shape. So again, start with the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is the longest side across from the right angle. See if you can label it on your own there. I'm going to stick my hypotenuse over here. And then I like to use the word adjacent. So again, I'm going to mark the angle that they give me. Okay, so put a nice big arc there. And remember, adjacent means next to. I would say this side and this side are next to my angle. One of them is the hypotenuse, so this must be the adjacent. And the opposite is the one that's across from the angle that you've marked. All right, I'm just going to box the two sides in I know. Adjacent, and I'm looking for hypotenuse. So write out Sokotoa again. Sokotoa. Okay, get it spelled out in your head. Keep practicing it. And I'm looking for adjacent and hypotenuse, which leaves me with cosine. So I'm going to say the cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And then I can say the cosine of 42 degrees and 30 minutes is equal to 25 over x. And hopefully you agree with that setup. Now all i got to do is solve the problem. And again, it's easier if you make it a fraction. So I'm going to put this over 1. I'm going to do a nice cross multiply x times this, and remember, always pull this single thing in front of your trig. So I'm going to say x cosine 42 degrees and 30 minutes equals 1 times 25 is 25. Now I have to do one extra step here. You'll notice x is not by itself. Your goal is to get x alone. So I'm just going to divide both sides by cosine of 42 degrees and 30 minutes. And then I'll get x equals, and I'm just going to carefully type this in the calculator. Alright, so I'm typing in my calculator, 
25 divided by the cosine button, it should open a parenthesis, type in your 42, and now you need to get this degree sign. So I think you should jot this in your notebook so you know where to get it again. In order to get that degree sign, you're going to have to hit second angle. Okay, and here's my second button, angle is on the app key, second angle. And when you do that, the very first thing in there is the degree symbol. So you can hit your 42 degrees, and then you'll have to go and type in 30 and hit that second angle again. And the second thing in there is the minutes. And then you can close your parentheses. And I end up with 33.9. So please make sure you're checking the buttons on the calculator as well. Jot down the steps so you can easily find them. All right, let's move on. All right, in right triangle ABC. So again, make sure you have a right triangle. C is a right angle. I'm going to label A and B anyplace else then. Mark in my angle. Little a, so they're talking about side A is 15, which is across from angle A. B is 20, so that's across from angle B. Find angle A. So you'll notice what well, this is a little different. This time, our angle is what we're looking for. Our angle's in the X spot there, to the nearest degree. So we're going to do almost the same thing. It's just how we actually solve the very end part, which is a little different. So pause me and go ahead and label your opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Okay, so pause it, try it on your own. If you can do that, you're in great shape. See if you agree with mine. I would definitely say the hypotenuse is here. I've marked this angle. That's where my x is, so my adjacent is next to these two. This one's already hypotenuse, so this must be adjacent, and opposite means across from. So I would definitely box in the opposite I know, and I know the adjacent. So I'm using O and A. So if I write out my SOKATOA, make sure we can spell that without looking back, I'm going to go with opposite and adjacent, which is T for tangent. So the tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. The tangent of x equals 15 over 20. Now this is where it's a little different. You're not going to do any cross multiplying. Okay, No cross multiplying here. What you are going to do is to solve for an angle. Okay, So let's make this a, an important note in our book here. To solve for an angle, you're going to press second and then your trig function. So in this case, I'm going to press second tan. All right, let's go ahead and try another one. In triangle ABC, a is 6, C is 22, and C is a right angle. So i got to start with C, label my right angle. Remember, that's going to be my A and B then. They can go anywhere. Side A is 6, so across from angle A. C is 22. Uh, find the measure of angle A. So I'm going to put a nice X in angle A. I'm going to mark my angle and label my sides. Okay, I'm going to start with that hypotenuse across from the right angle. Adjacent means next to. There are two sides next to the angle I've marked. One's already the hypotenuse, so this is the adjacent, which makes this the opposite side. I'm going to box in the two that I know, hypotenuse and opposite. Write out my SOKATOA. And decide I'm using opposite and hypotenuse. So that's going to leave me with sine. So the sine of x is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So in this case, sine of x is what I'm looking for. My opposite is 6 over 22. Okay. So since I'm finding that angle, I'm going to do sine inverse. Sine inverse of this side, and then sine inverse of this side. And hopefully that inverse, you know, I'm saying sine inverse like we know what we've seen that before when we did inverse functions, f to the negative 1 means inverse. These will cancel out and I'll get x and then just carefully hit second sign in your calculator, 6 divided by 22 and I've got 15.8 and to the nearest degree we're going to call that 16 degrees. Well, we're coming up on the last two problems of the night. 
Um, one of them is finding a side and one's finding an angle. So I really suggest you pausing it, see if you can do it on your own and match up with my work. Um, I'm not going to talk through each one completely, but I will show my work. Um, but again, get the most out of this you can. Pause it, try it on your own. So I've got my pictures sketched. Um, I've labeled that I know the adjacent and I'm looking for the opposite. So O and A, if I look at my Sokotoa, O and A goes with tangent. So I'm going to say the tangent of X equals O over A. Tangent of my angle is 20. That's X over 6. Make it into a fraction, cross multiply. Remember to always write that single digit out front. 6 tan of 20 equals X. Is X by itself? I would definitely say yes. So I can go straight to my calculator. 6 tan of 20, I get 2.18. So to the nearest whole number, I've got a nice answer of 2. And hopefully you've got the same thing there. All right, like I said, uh, last one, I would pause it, try it on your own, see if you've got this under control, and uh, check back with my answer in a minute. Uh, so see, it was my right angle. I've got everything labeled. Um, I've marked my angle X here, so I've got H for hypotenuse, adjacent, A and H, looks like cosine. So the cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to say the cosine of x equals 15 over 37. So remember, this time you're not cross-multiplying when you want the angle. You're taking the cosine inverse of both sides. Okay, so the angle one's a little different. You're taking the inverse. And that's just second cosine of 15 divided by 37. And I get an answer of 66 degrees. Well, there you have it. Um, hopefully, Sokotoa, sine, cosine, and tangent ring a bell from Algebra 1. If they don't, that's okay too. We'll get a lot of good practice tomorrow. Have a great week.